The Binding of Isaac Repentance is where we are now and what we all love. But it never started here. It all started from the very old Flash game. Wait a second, we're not gonna start from all the way back there, right? Aye, ah, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, where I believe most of what we now call the OG player started. If you used to play back there, you'll know that there wasn't any really good mod. There wasn't anything but one mod, actually, and it was Missing HUD. The game didn't have the bar stats at the left side showing your statistics, and that somebody modded it in. The name it had, Missing HUD, is the reason why now it's called Found HUD. This all brings us to Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus. See, back then we didn't have the Steam Workshop, it wasn't a thing that we could use, and thus it all relied on one single web page called The Modding of Isaac. This is where people fetched their mod, tested it, tried it, and explored it with more users, and it's where the original Antibirth was posted. Many mods released during these days, and yet only two big bosses were in the scene. The foreshadowed Antibirth and Revelation. Both mods that have inspired in some way Isaac Repentance into being what it is today. If you own this DLC of the game, you'll realize that by seeing the gameplay of Antibirth, it is extremely similar, and that's because 90% or maybe a tiny bit less of the content from there actually came into the own game. While the only real thing that Repentance saved from Revelation is the Mirror Dimension, which looked a lot different to be honest. These were the very first mods to be that big that they added new bosses, new floors and new items all at the same time. Seeing this stuff made people get more and more into modding, creating thousands and thousands of mods for Afterbirth Plus, which was at the state the best thing the game had ever seen. It is at this point that people started developing tools that I use to this day. Namely, we have the resource extractor, from which you can take all the assets of the game and unpack for later use of your own. The Basement Renovator, which allows you to modify basements in such a simple matter. The Isaac Lua documentation, which you can find in the Wofsuch GitHub repo. And many, many more. After the booster pack, the game got a big bunch of new players coming in. And with the mods, it became so fresh that everybody was addicted to Isaac. This immensely compensated for the 60 years wait between Isaac Afterbirth Plus and Repentance. But when it came, oh my god, did everything change. It is at this time that Isaac saw a massive revamp in the API system. Made simple, APIs act as a language that allows different software applications to talk to one another. This in Isaac means that you can have multiple compatibilities with mods, multiple stuff all over at the same time and all communicating directly with the game so that there's no conflict. These improvements are literally the reason why you can see players nowadays running with more than 100 mods at the same time. This leads us to what I now call the golden era of modding, where all the current best mods are made. Let's have a deep dive in the most recognizable mods of all time. External item description, a name that everybody will recognize on the top of the leaderboard since the start of the times. This mod will make so whatever item you're looking at has a description of all its benefits, negatives, and it'll even tell you whether you have picked it for your save file or not. The specialist stands for good items. You know what this is, I know what this is, we've seen it from countless YouTubers, and it is beautiful to have Isaac vectorized dancing for cool items. This to me is not really a quality of life mod, but it is something that you need if you want to make your game experience much more fun. Here we reach a very controversial side of modding. Mods that benefit your game and make it exploitable. Here in particular we're talking about the Good Trip Teleport mod, which allows you to teleport in both cleared and uncleared rooms of your map without wasting time any way whatsoever. This means that you could TP back and forth through floors to get pickups, to do whatever you want, get out of rooms as you're seeing right now, and still make it in time for boss rush. This grants you extra item, extra movement, and abilities that you shouldn't have, and thus it's disliked by most of the community. Now, before we move on, on to actually gameplay changing mods that are things that we've never seen before and shape the future, let's talk about what I believe is the best must-have mod of all time. This being Mod Config Menu Pure. As you can see, it allows you to have a menu where you can sort all of your mods, all the settings within them, and adjust them at your own will. Depending on the mods that you have, you can do any sort of stuff, from applying keybinds, changing sizes of HUD, or even setting up emotes. And yes, this is how I explode in my videos. 
Now, we've talked about these, but where are the mods that actually change the landscape of modding for the future? Where are the character and item mods? Although we've seen Anti-Birth and Revelation which have added these things, it will be far far later that we'll get our very own character and item mods alone, without any mega pack, without any fancy new bosses, just the standalone feature. Let's begin with the legendary Samuel. This guy right here might not be the very first modded character, but he is the first modded melee character, and he also came with something that is now standard within modded ones. A custom pocket active that does something else. This character got very famous because he has an insane amount of synergies with the base game, and at the same time a lot of new features with his beautiful sight, being able to shoot it as well as hold it to kill enemies at long and short range. But more than anything, the funniest bit, the Malak mod, his own pocket active which will work like Berserk and allow him to feast on the enemies until their blood is gone. This mod will later be followed by hundreds of other mods as you're seeing right now on screen which will modify the paths, the game mechanics and the sprite in order to give a more interesting experience to the gamers. Here the golden era ends, but we say hi to Repentagon, the latest addition and best modding tool Isaac has ever seen since its beginning. But what is Repentagon? Repentagon is a mod that is exclusively built for Repentance that extends the Lua API with bug fixes, extra functionality and performance enhancement. This means that if you have this downloaded, not only will your mods flow better, but mod creators have the ability to do so much more. As you can see, Repentagon completely changes the looks of the console and even allows you to turn it on in the menu. That is because we have some mods called Shenanigans, which can do so much stuff for your benefit. An example will be Character Shenanigans, which allows you to modify your save file in real time, adding or removing whatever mark you have on any character, locking their items, unlocking them, and being free to modify it at your own will. Not only that, but we also have the stats and achievement shenanigans, which allows you to unlock or lock any secret, either being modded or not, and even modifying stats like Eden tokens in real time. There is also the win streak shenanigans, which allows you to put some funny numbers into the streak. <laughs> nice. And many, many more, which can make your game better. But that's not the only functionality Repentagon has, it also makes using the dev console within the game much much more useful, whether it is for giving yourself items or spawning them onto the ground. Once if you wanted to spawn them onto the ground, you had to type the full ID, where right now you can just type spawn brimstone and tab once or twice and you will get the same result. What you couldn't do before though that is very beautiful is give yourself trinket without having to know the ID giving yourself cards, active, and pills. Even pills that aren't in the run, you can decide it even if you're blind. This is where we're currently at, and I can't wait to see the next step when Isaac Online drops. This game has a lot of potential, and if it is still live, in my opinion, it is because of modding. Guys, I appreciate you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below what you think, and if you would like some more Isaac documentaries, like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow in my daily videos.